Brilliant. And just to say maybe the slide before, the um, poll question uh, for this session is up there. So medium stenotomy is safer than minimally invasive techniques for mitral valve repair. So please, um, as the debate evolves, answer the question and then we'll tell you the results uh, at the end of the session. Uh, so my job really is just to set the scene for the debate. Um, and one of the reasons why we designed this trial is that almost every meeting I go to, this debate is one of the um, one of the sessions. Is many better than conventional, and and of course uh, this meeting is no exception. So, uh, my name is Enoch Akoa, as, as uh, um, Professor uh, uh, Wendler has already said, and I, I work at James Cook in Middlesbrough, uh, and I'm the, the chief investigator for the trial. So I, I hope that what um, Prakash and Thorsten are going to do in the next half an hour, so uh, is essentially to convince you of this essential point that actually. Uh, there is clinical equipoise about which of these two operations is better, because we, we really, as a community, haven't got a definitive answer to this question. Uh, and, and that's the space in which we, we design all randomized controlled trials. So if you're a 72-year-old gentleman who has isolated mitral valve uh, uh, regurgitation and needs uh, an isolated mitral valve repair, are you going to have the operation on the left or the operation on the right? And at the moment, there's quite a big dis uh, disparity between the two operations in the UK. And the question is, should, should those numbers be reversed, uh, be even, or should they stay exactly the same uh, as they are at the moment? So uh, one of the problems with doing these trials is that they are just really, quite simply, very, very difficult to do. And there are a number of really key hurdles that we've tried to uh, solve in the design of the trial. And, and we've been around the houses about this. And, Everyone always has a view about why you did A rather than B. But, but in the next few slides, I just want to go through what the main uh, sort of pillars of the trial are. Uh, and the key things we have to address are one of equipoise. So one of the things that was always going to be a problem, and it's clearly a problem as we run the trial, is that it's quite hard to convince surgeons as a question to answer at all. So convincing the surgical community that you know, there is equipoise around this question, although there is evidence in our literature and our practice and the fact that we're debating at this meeting that there is equipoise should be self-evident, but actually that's a hurdle to, to jump over. The other question is around what you measure to tell the difference between the two operations. And the, the problem is that everyone wants to, to measure different things. And when you're doing an RCT, you can only really measure one thing. Uh, but surgeons want to know something, cardiologists want to know something, patients want to know something else. And so try, trying to find an, a, a question that will uh, satisfy everyone's uh, desires is, is difficult. The third thing is, of course, there aren't that many patients who have isolated mitral valve surgery uh, in the UK. Uh, there are about 2,000 a year. So you've got an issue of power, uh, and that immediately means you need to have a, a multi-center trial. And multi-center trials are really just complex. So you, you get into complex trial design issues. And then finally, as always with surgery, there's the issue around expertise. You know, So not all surgeons do minimally invasive surgery. So you have to account for that in your trial design somehow. So this is what we've come up with. So UK Mini Mitral is a prospective randomized control trial. It's multi-center. It's based only in the UK. And it compares conventional stenotomy with a minimally invasive approach, which is defined as a mini thoracotomy using minimally invasive instruments, using a camera, and using peripheral cannulation. The trial is predominantly, predominantly aimed at recruiting patients who've got uh, mitral degenerative disease, so patients who are going to have mitral valve repair surgery. Uh, and we're looking to recruit 400 patients for the trial, and each patient's followed up for a year after, after entering the trial. The trial is funded by the HTA, so this is a question that the NHS has decided. It's an important question to answer, and it's funded for five years. And it will be the largest ever trial of minimally invasive cardiac surgery ever done anywhere in the world. So it's a hugely exciting opportunity, but it also does mean that we've got some really unique problems that we have to solve uh, as, as we design the trial. It started with a six-month pilot phase at four centres, Middlesbrough, Blackpool, Kings, and Basildon. Uh, but it very quickly became evident that we're going to need more centres. So over the course of, 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 of last year and, and early this year, we'll be increasing to a total of 10 centres uh, around the country. The first answer to the questions I posed two or three slides ago around what are we going to hang this whole trial on uh, is that we're going to hang it on what the patients want to know. So we, 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 we really were quite careful in terms of speaking to patients and designing a trial that really 
will, will, will demonstrate benefits to patients. So it answers a question that I get asked all the time when I'm in a clinic. Doctor, if I have this new keyhole operation, will I get better quicker than I would have done if I have the conventional operation? So the trial's main objective is to determine whether your physical functioning um, and, and, and your associated usual activities return quicker after a minimally invasive approach than after a conventional approach. Uh, and because the trial is funded by the NHS really to determine the cost effectiveness of the operation, there's a primary economic objective as well. But that's measured over a year. So it's minimally invasive, uh, more cost effective than conventional surgery when you follow the patients up for a whole year after their operation. We're going to measure all the other questions that everyone wants answering. So can you do the valve repair as well, and will the valve repair last as long? Um, you know, what about complications of surgery and redos and bleeding and, you know, et cetera? And, of course, quality of life uh, is a key component of, of any uh, such trial. The other hurdle that I, I, I uh, pointed out at the beginning of the talk was one of expertise. How are we going to cope with this idea of expertise? And there are a number of ways of doing it, but we've gone for an expertise-based randomization trial. So what we've decided is that actually this trial can only take place in units where you've got a, an established and well-functioning mini mitral program. And so the unit has to have had a program for at least a year, done at least 50 operations, work with a team, uh, because we, we all recognize that you need a team to get really good outcomes with this operation, and, and importantly, have an MDT or a process where patients can be appropriately selected, because we know that selection of mitral valve patients is quite complicated. So we've got two experts in this trial. We've got a mini expert and a conventional expert. And those are the definitions for the two experts, which means that we can run a trial that looks like this. So we can just compare A to B. So we're basically comparing an expert mini surgeon doing a mini operation to an expert conventional surgeon doing a conventional operation. And if we can do that, that's, that's the, the way we can, we can get the smallest possible trial. So if we can do that, we only need 382 patients to be able to answer our primary question about recovery from surgery. The trial is pretty broad-based, so we're looking to include all patients who have degenerative mitral valve um, disease. And one of the things that we've changed as the trial has evolved is that we've now decided to include patients with tricuspid regurgitation as well. And that really is a recognition that actually when we started running this trial, quite a lot of minimally invasive surgeons were only addressing the mitral valve with the minimally invasive technique. And in the, in the three or four years that the trial has evolved, actually that practice has changed. And so we're now including patients who have got tricuspid regurgitation as well. We've excluded patients who clearly can't have a mini because they're having some uh, coronaries or, or something else, pa patients who are clearly going to have a mitral valve replacement at the outset, and patients who are having uh, emergency surgery, redo surgery, or who have endocarditis. One of the key uh, innovations in this trial is a, is a, is a collaboration with industry uh, using an accelerometer device to really measure how patients recover from surgery. So patients will be wearing this uh, accelerometer device uh, at those intervals shown on the screen throughout their recovery. They wear it for a week, and we can really track what patients do for the first time. So if they're going out for a jog or going for a swim or just sitting in the chair doing the knitting, we'll be able to tell how they get on when they get home. And that's, that's been one of the missing bits of the information when we've been trying to compare these two operations. Clearly, the other really important thing is the echo. So we have an echo core lab. All the, all the echoes from around the country are going to be analyzed by one team in one place, uh, and the data is all um, anonymized for, for, for reporting. And so we'll be able to measure uh, echo function at three time points preoperatively, very early after surgery and late after surgery. And so we can really tell the difference between the two techniques uh, with regards to the echo outcomes. And this is not just valve repair, but clearly left ventricular volumes and function and right ventricular volumes and function as well. The other key component, of course, is health economics because, you know, in this cash-strapped NHS, clearly being able to demonstrate that one procedure is more cost-effective than another is really key. Uh, and, and, and being able to do that, not just in the hospital, but actually during the follow-up stage, is really important. So we've got a, a large health economic team uh, who are collecting data on the health economic use of these patients, uh, of, of the NHS by these patients throughout the trial as well. The trial starts with an internal pilot, uh, which we ran... Um, between um, August 16 and, and February 17, uh, 17 uh, and that was really uh, for the NHS to decide whether we could, we could really deliver this trial. So we had a target to meet across the foresight, and we met that, and so the full trial is now up and running. 
Uh, we've got 97 patients in the trial so far. We're looking to recruit, as I showed you on the slide, 400 patients where we've got about another two years to recruit. Uh, and we're hoping that once all our 10 centers are open and recruiting, we'll really start to ramp up in terms of getting, getting patients into the trial. So this is a really exciting opportunity. Uh, it's a trial that uh, I remember lots of people saying, this trial will never get done. It will never get done. And, and they're right, because it's so hard to do. Uh, but actually, if we do do it, I think it will yield a, a wealth of information for, for us as a community. So that's the scene set. <laughs> we'll know the answer to this question in about three or four years' time. But in the meantime, it's over to you, Prakash, to tell us why we should all just be doing stenotomies rather than mini thoracotomies. <laughs> 